Hello, bet riders around the world. My name is Gary Solomon, and you're watching the Laid Back Bike Report Open Forum. Let's see, can you see this here? Yeah, there you <laughs> yeah. go. This is our new hot opening. Uh, <laughs> folks, uh, welcome. If you're watching uh, live right now, with this is uh, our open forum concept where we uh, hopefully get you guys to come on the air, talk about some recumbent. Uh, uh, issue of the day or something that's on your mind, uh, your bike that you want to talk about, you may want to sell, uh, problems you've had with it, uh, anything along those lines. We just open it up for you and see if anybody kind of shows up. So um, with me today is our regular uh, sports director and panelist, Denny Voorhees. Let me uh, pop Denny on the screen so everybody can see him. There you go. Hey, Denny. Hey, there's a pop. Yeah, I'm here. How you doing, Gary? Should okay. be interesting today. Yeah, we'll see what happens. So, um, all right. So, this is, as you can tell, a, a much uh, less formal setup than our uh, usual uh, themed show. And uh, we want to uh, talk to you guys about anything you may want to talk about. So, um, we are going to tell you how this works. For those of you who haven't seen any of the uh, uh, social media posts that I've made. Uh, this is what you do. There is a link that will get you in here with uh, Denny and me. And I have posted that link on uh, Bent Rider. There's a, um, there's a thread going about the Laidback Bike Report open forum. You'll look there and you'll see a, a line that says click this to come in and, and join us. So there's, uh, there's that on Bent Rider. Uh, if you're on Facebook, um, you can go to the uh, Laidback Bike Report page or, or my uh, personal uh, timeline, Gary Solomon, and you'll see another post there. And I think I posted in a couple of groups there on Facebook as well, um, recumbent uh, biking group and triking group, and I think a Velomobile group as well. If you're on Twitter, find Gary Solomon on Twitter. I've got that link there as well. And for those of you who are subscribing uh, to the website, uh, laidbackbikereport.com, uh, I also have uh, the link uh, sent out to the subscribers in an email that went out about a half an hour ago. So uh, find that link and click on it, and you'll come in and talk with us. In the meantime, uh, Denny and I are going to chat a little bit uh, just to kind of get things rolling here. And you guys come in, we'll, uh, you can interrupt us, and we'll go right to you. So. Uh, Denny, uh, one of the things that we wanted to uh, chat about, and I think maybe other people might as well, is the uh, contest that uh, that uh, Brian Ball uh, put on Bent Rider about the uh, bike and trike and accessory of the year for uh, for 2016. So, um, did you have a chance to take a look at those? Yeah, I sure did. Um, you know, I'm trying to think what the accessories were, but uh, I do know the, you know, on, on the bikes, trikes, they, they're all uh, worthy uh, worthy of the uh, praise, I think. Uh, it it's, might be a tough choice this year. So, you know, um, Brian, I think, has an interesting way of setting this up uh, to try to keep it as fair as possible and, and make sure that the results make some sense. So I, he's got, uh, seven, um, major votes that are counted to find out the winners in each of these categories. And, uh, the general public has a vote and there's a couple of, um, uh, bike shops that have votes. I think a couple people in the media have votes and, uh, Brian and, uh, and Larry, uh, Varney, uh, are also involved. So uh, if that doesn't add up to seven, it's because I've skipped somebody. But um, so that's how it generally works. So um, first of all, for the uh, for the bikes of the year, um, some pretty interesting ones there. Um, let me take a quick look here, and we'll we'll see what they are. So um, uh, the uh, the Azub uh, tie fly. If we're talking about trikes, first of all. Uh, is one the 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 cat trike Dumont, which there's been a lot of chatting about. Terra trike Sportster, the uh, tri Trident Terrain, the Sunseeker Fat Tad rounds it out. So uh, f actually, there's some real differences between all of those. I don't know if this is going to turn out to be a popularity contest or not, but um, there's certainly there's certainly some big differences between all of those. And, um, you know, the fat trike is a, is a completely different category. So um, the, the Trident and the Sunseeker 
you know, I guess those would be competing against each other for that sort of trike. Uh, this time of year, uh, many of you folks who, like uh, Denny and myself, are in the northern climes are experiencing some very cold, icy, snowy weather. So uh, it makes you kind of think about uh, getting on one of those uh, one of those uh, fat trikes and giving it a try. For um, the uh, bikes of the year, we've got the uh, cruise bike Silvio uh, S30. Um, Peter Stahl's linear uh, folding roadster, the Lightning P38 Rocks, the new uh, new version of the Lightning P38, the Performer folding front wheel drive, and the Schlitter Encore 20. So uh, all interesting and quality entries to be chosen. A lot of different choices there as well. And then lastly, uh, the accessory of the year. Um, we got the Bendit Excursion Cycling Pants, uh, the Finer Recliner uh, Generation 2 Curve Neck Rest, um, Peddler's uh, Trike Stand, Magnum and Stort Solution from Peddler Trikes, which is a local bike shop here in Ohio, actually, and the uh, TerraCycle Universal Flag Mount, which um, Pat Fran showed us a couple of shows ago when we did his interview there. So. Um, those are all the different entries into the contest. So <clears throat> if you haven't had a chance to, um, to take a look at those, do so and um, you'll be able to vote, make your voice heard there. So speaking of making your voice heard, we've not heard from anybody yet that wants to come on the air and, uh, and help us out. Um, oh, we got somebody here. But we do have, uh, yeah, we've, go ahead, uh, Denny, we got somebody on check. Yeah, ahead, I'm new to triking, been riding an upright for 11 years now. Suggestions on how to select a faster road riding type trike. My first trike, I'm uh, six foot four and a 275 pound Clydesdale. You, you hey, and he I calls are... himself SBC Clydesdale. So yeah, I, okay, I yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, I'm I'm in that category. Not quite 270 yet, but if I don't stop putting down the fork, I will be for very, pretty soon. Tell, tell um, us who what your what uh, trike do you have, Denny? Yeah, I've got an older, um, you know, I, mine's a, a 2004 uh, Cat Trike Road. Uh, not particularly fast, but uh, I think the key to getting a faster trike is really you want to look for a, 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 a at least a 26-inch rear wheel. And um, I don't know, uh, you know, almost all of them now have that feature. As a matter of fact, I think everybody does have that feature now. Uh, when I got my trike, why... Uh, 20s were pretty much it. That was uh, nobody really. I, there was only maybe one company that put out a 26 inch rear wheel, but that really does bring the speed up a little bit. Uh, with a with a 20 inch wheel in normal gearing, you, you, I'm sure you found out that you know you you spin out at about uh, 22, 23 miles an hour, and that's pretty much it. Um, which when if you're older, that's probably a bit about right. But uh, I'd look for a, uh, a 26 and and 20 with skinny tires. Uh, everybody's got them out there, and and I don't know that any one is faster than the other. So um, that's my take on it, anyways. Hey, I'm going to uh, go ahead and put the link to join us on the show in the chat. So. Um, Mr. Clydesdale, if you'd like to join us, I'm going to put it in here too, or anybody else that is in the chat. Um, oh yeah, it, there's there's another ch uh, message. Go ahead, Danny. Yeah, you're very you're very right. A Velomobile will uh, complete an, uh, an outrun and upright on the flats, on the up on the uphills, a lot of extra weight, uh, but uh, yeah, and downhills, of course, <laughs> they're just like like a bullet. That's absolutely true, of course, and and uh, Velmobiles uh, are, of course, um, known as the the fastest recumbents out there, and except for streamliners, but that that sort of configuration with a full fairing. If you look, uh, if you look to um, uh, Battle Mountain, where the World Human Powered uh, Vehicle uh, Speed Championships are held every year, uh, it is either a Velmobile or uh, something with two wheels and not three. Uh, but shaped just like that Velmobile, that uh, that carries the uh, the prize for the fastest human-powered vehicles on Earth. So yeah, absolutely, that's the direction to go. 
Um, okay, so that's posted in the chat there. Anybody want to click on that link? Come on in with us. You can talk directly with us. Or if you are too shy for that, just go ahead and uh, you can talk to us on chat, and that'll work. Uh, that'll work just fine. Um, Certainly back, gives us something to talk about. Uh, back to the uh, to the uh, fast uh, faster kind of road triking um, choice. So as uh, many of you know, I. Uh, I am riding a, a Sprint uh, X full suspension uh, with a hard shell seat as opposed to the webbing kind of seat or the, the mesh seat. And if you're talking about the kinds of things that you can do, uh, I think it's, it's fairly evident that if you, are, if you have a, a hard shell seat where you can push up against the back, um, that is likely to make you a bit faster. Also. Uh, the fiberglass or carbon, depending on which choice you make there, um, is is going to be a little bit lighter than the than the web seat. Uh, the tire choices you make, Denny talked about the size of the rear wheel. Of course, I think that's that's something that's uh, uh, commonly thought that the uh, larger 26 inch 700 C kind of wheel is going to make you a little bit faster. Although people will dispute that. Um, but also the uh, the width of your of your tires uh, may have something to do with I think how fast you go, um, and the aerodynamics. How fast uh, do you lay that? How far I should say do you lay that seat back? Uh, aerodynamics uh, always uh, as you get up in speed start playing a bigger and uh, bigger uh, role. So um, yeah, that that's it for the uh, for the try question. Um, what else we got, Denny? Let's. Um, well, we were talking about bike of the year, and uh, you know, if we want to continue on that, I. Uh... So we had a chance to see most of those bikes. Uh, Denny and I did while we were at uh, at CycleCon uh, this this fall, and had a chance to ride most of them. So you know, um, I guess one of the big questions you see come up all the time is how do I choose. A recumbent bike. If you decided to go in that direction, how? If you're a complete newbie and you don't know where to go, how do you choose uh, the type of recumbent bike or trike that you're going to uh, uh, to buy? So that's one that pops up all the time. And of course, it's such a personal, subjective kind of subject. But you got to decide. I think first. Let's see if you agree with this, Danny. Don't you decide first, really, what sort of riding you're going to do? Oh yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, and you got to try a lot of stuff. We have uh, another comment by the uh, by SBD SBC Clayle and and Llewellyn. You want to handle this one about the hard shell seat? You're more experienced with them than I am. Yeah. So um, SBC, you live in uh, Louisiana apparently, and you're concerned about sweating. So yeah, you know what? Um, the uh, the uh, ice uh, hard shell seats are made with pads that have channels in them, and I think they are made as as well as they can be to allow airflow back there. But there is no question that you're going to get better airflow, and you're going to be much more comfortable in terms of temperature on your back uh, and less sweat with a webbed uh, kind of mesh seat than you would with a hard shell. Very legitimate, and you know, if you are big enough, um, the 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 hard shell seats only go so wide. So um, I think they do a great job of accommodating a lot of people. But if you are if you have a large enough uh, bottom and back, uh, then you know it it might dig in and might not be uh, the best choice for you. Yeah, so. and, and there's a, another uh, comment there. Uh, Lyle Weddle uh, use a Venice seat pad on a hard shell sheet. <laughs> hard shell seat. That's a hard word to say uh this is what i use in the quest velomobile and, that's, and that's a, the, that ventus it? isn't that what that's called a ventus yeah, ventus yeah i think i said ventus but maybe i didn't but uh, okay and yeah so that's um yeah those i've, I've not ever used one but i've heard no. a lot of good things about those yes, as I well. too. they're um they're a foam right with a lot of air pockets in between them and they support you and allow yeah. for some flow is that fair to say is it i i think they also have a a cover that, uh, and, and he might want to make a comment on it. I think they have a cover that that places you above the foam a little bit and gives it a little bit of ventilation in there too. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I maybe a Lyle can make a comment that on that. Um, well, here we go. Let me um, let me share my screen and let's take a look here. Oh, okay, that's even better. 
and you can see what it is. So, um, there you go. That's yeah, there's one right there. That's not a very good picture here. How about that? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You see so, that that uh, kind of a, a wide. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. A, a coarse mesh, very coarse. Um, supposed to be a lot better, and I could see where there would be a lot more ventilation there, though. Um, I have tried one long time ago. I, I don't recall. It was for a very short period of time, so it really wasn't uh, uh, wasn't a good test of it. But um, there's always, uh, you know, there's a lot of people in the South, that's for sure, that that uh, ride in in uh, much hotter temperatures, and um, I'm sure they have something that works for them. Um, I know. Yeah, I've so there's even a closer look that you can see. We can see that wide open mesh. Yep. So yeah. It, yep. So if you're out there and uh, and you use it, and uh, Lyle Weddle says, "Yep, that's what I use." So um, great. All right. Ah, ah, hey, we got somebody. Yeah. Bill. Oh, you're buddy Bill. My buddy, Bill. Bill. <laughs> uh, my buddy too. How you doing, pal? All right. Let me Good. stop presenting this. Good. Hold on. I'm going to stop presenting. There we go. Phil, turn yourself around there. Are you are you ready to talk? So. All right. Stand in one place for a minute. Let's hear. So, uh, folks, this is Phil Paulson. He lives in central Ohio, not too far from where I am. One of my riding buddies as well. And uh, I think Phil is going to show us a couple of bikes he has in the garage uh, and uh, talk to you a little bit about it. Phil, go ahead and tell us what's going on there. I'm going to present you. Go ahead. Okay, I've just got a couple bikes here I'd like to sell. Uh, one's a Ryan Vanguard. It's about a 97 or 98, and that's when I purchased it from an older gentleman who bought it, rode it around the block, and said, I can't do this. <laughs> Phil, if I could suggest to you, can you turn your phone uh, horizontally? Uh, there, there you go. You go. Now you got a better view. Now you can kind of move in a little bit just to kind of show what you're talking about. Okay, so um, tell us a little bit about this bike. Am I breaking up? No, no, no you're doing go good. Ahead. Oh, okay. But this is the Vanguard. It's a 98, like I said, around there, 96, 98 through there. And I also have a P38 Lightning. That's what just year, about from that vintage that? 97. I can tell you that the serial number on it is 1170. Yeah, it's about one of the first years for the 20-inch uh, front wheel, I think. Yeah, that's that 406. It's real narrow. Yeah. It yep. started out as a Daytona package, which had the campy parts on it. Uh, but when I bought it from the gentleman, he kept the parts, and now it's primarily a 105 group. Okay. And how many miles would you estimate that bike has on it? Oh, I don't know. I've had it for 20 years, and I've spread it over all, well, as you can see back here on the wall, <laughs> between the, the tandem, the gold rush. I still ride a diamond frame once in a while, uh, and the Vanguard. It, it, would be, it would be very hard to guess what it is. It's fair to say there's a lot of miles on it, though. I'm sorry? It's fair to say there are a lot of miles on it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it got ridden. Okay. I wouldn't say that. It, it's not like a primary bike or anything that I rode. Like I said, I shared them all. And I also, okay. if I go back in the van, I got a Cat Trike 700. So I just need to yeah, you just remove got some of the herd. <laughs> yeah, you got to thin it, thin it out a little bit. Yeah. All right, so do you have an idea what kind of uh, money you want to talk about for these? Oh, I don't. I was looking maybe a thousand on the Vanguard for the fairing and eight fifty on the uh, P thirty eight Lightning. Okay. I mean, I'm negotiable. All right. And so, if folks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put what your, I'll put your email in the description of the video afterwards, so folks can find you uh, on that. Is that the best place? Do you have it posted anywhere, Phil? No, not yet. Okay. So um, y y there might be a chance for anybody who's looking for uh, something like this to get a quick uh, inside uh, uh, track on these um, because Phil hasn't even got them out uh, advertised yet. So I will post his uh, email. Uh, actually, we can probably say it here, and then I'll post it as well. Uh, 
bent pilot three correct at gmail.com is that right Phil? Uh, that's right yeah okay Phil, Phil, I, got a, Go ahead. I got a couple questions for you what uh, size wise um, I think p38 and Vanguard came in sizes or rough sizing anyways uh, any idea uh, I would say that the, it, the p38 is a large and I bought that used in 97 that gentleman wrote it for about a year and decided okay. it was a little finicky for him uh, and the uh, Vanguard, I, I didn't really realize they came in different sizes other than they made I, the I'm duplex. Not, yeah, I'm not sure if they did or not. Uh, maybe so, not. Yeah, yeah. I know, I'm pretty sure the P38 comes in sizes, so that would yeah, be a I question. Think it did. And it does, uh, well, that, uh, it's got a front shock on it, you know. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah. So let just, me ask uh, you, um, let me ask you because, you know, before you came on, Denny and I were talking, it's interesting, we were just talking about how people, uh, what criteria people w would use to um, to choose a bike if they've not uh, a recumbent bike if they haven't uh, actually had one before? And since uh, since you have so many uh, bikes there uh, uh, and have ridden so many different kinds, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about say the experience versus uh, the experience of riding an underseat steering like the Vanguard versus an overseat steering like the the Lightning. What, what what's it like? Uh, that's the reason I got two of them. It's just a different ride. It's like going to the amusement park. You know, they all kind of either spin you or make you go up and down, but there's a lot of different ones. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to explain it. Or, or your cars. How many people have a, you got a pickup truck, you got a Volkswagen, you got a Cadillac. They're just different rides. And uh, I would suggest, you know, before you buy something, kind of ride them all. That's what they tell you. Yeah, that's the best advice. It is. Okay. I mean, Those uh, are... Yeah, go ahead, Phil. I, can, I was going to say, I can tell you the first uh, recumbent I had was the Vanguard. And I was kind of leery with the underseat steering, but the guy pushed me off down a hill. I didn't get to the bottom of the hill and said, this bike's for me. <laughs> I mean, it's just um, to have your hands just down there. And uh, a lot of people tour on these and they'll put a little burly trailer behind it and take off and go. It's not you a know, fast bike, but it, it sure is comfortable. Yep, and uh, I was going to say that um, for those of you who are kind of following along with the show, um, our next regularly scheduled show uh, with a featured guest is going to be January 8th uh, with uh, Stephen Roberts, uh, the high-tech nomad, and I'm working now with him to get the show put together. But um, if you don't know about this guy, he's an amazing guy that traveled in the early 80s uh, on a a long underseat steering bike that's very similar to what Phil is showing you uh, right there. Let me put it back on again to that right there. It was the basis for what he um, eventually put together with all kinds of computers and GPS and ham radio and all kinds of interesting things that were on the very cutting edge of technology in the early 80s, obviously. And uh, that was the form that he put it on an underseat steering I think it was an avatar actually but um, it was the precursor to what you were looking at right there and uh, and and Stephen has written a couple books talks all about how he loves that uh, recumbent that sort of recumbent bike because of the comfort and he traveled over 17,000 miles around the country on one loaded up that often went over 300 pounds uh, after you had everything loaded up on it. So I don't recommend you do that with uh, Phil's bike if you buy it, but you never know uh, <laughs> what you might want to end up doing with it. But uh, all right, so good. That's that's good. And then, Phil, your other bikes that are, are not for sale, uh, you've got, a, you've got a, a Screamer there. Yeah, I've got a Screamer and uh, my wife's Gold Rush and my Gold Rush hanging up. It's an older Torelli. So yeah, was, um, if you decide what? you want to ride, Phil, and uh, and it's a nice day outside, let's say, nothing like what it is right now, um, What? how do you come to the decision of which bike, which of those children do you choose to, uh, to ride? Uh, if it's going to be cold and it's dry, I'll be on the Gold Rush just because of the fairing. And if it's a little bit wet, I'll probably jump on the Vanguard. The, the lightning's just, uh, the tires are way too thin. 
<laughs> I gotcha. Denny, did you have something? No, I, I was uh, uh, wondering what the road bike was hanging up there. Uh, it's a Torelli Italian Torelli. bike. It's, okay. Yeah, it's uh, quite an old one. It doesn't get yeah. a whole lot of use. Yeah, okay, yeah. You got it in a non, you know, not right there in the uh, a queue for. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's a giveaway. Yeah, it's it's a give. Yeah, it's a tell right there. Okay, um, you know, maybe this is a good point for us to chat a little bit about um, what the parameters are for you getting on your bike and riding in terms of weather. So. Um, these days, uh, many of us decide we're going to go indoors, maybe uh, put your uh, recumbent bike on a trainer, ride indoors, or you go to the gym. But there are plenty of recumbent riders who get out there almost no matter what the temperature or conditions are and, uh, and, and ride their bike. So, um, Danny, what, what would you say are the most extreme conditions you have ever ridden in? And you have done some extreme riding as well. So Yeah, I, and you know, I, I'm kind of a wuss, but of course, up here in the Northeast, uh, uh, I guess probably uh, 20, maybe. I, I had a bad experience years ago on an upright bike uh, with black ice and, and at temperature around 30, to, you know, 30, 32 degrees. And I've been real skittish about it since then. I, I, when I was training for Ram in 2009, I, I did put myself out a lot wider tires. So I, I rode mountain bike and that kind of thing. But uh, um, I'm not a fat tire guy. I, I'm really looking to go, really looking to go south in the future years for the winter time. That's for sure. Okay. Yeah, we're going to probably uh, be in Florida again this. Uh, this winter about the same time. So we'll probably yeah. be meeting up there. I, I kind of agree with you there too. I've ridden, I think briefly when it's been in the teens really bundled up, but I mean, maybe five miles or something beyond that. It's just too uncomfortable for me. My feet just freeze up. And it's not uh, and something I, I enjoy. Yeah, it really no, is. it's not for me. It's not fun. So, and that's really why I ride. I think most people do. So um, yeah. What about the other end of the spectrum? How about when it's 100 degrees outside? Uh, I've yeah. ridden 100 plus, yeah, 110, you know, I've ridden out in that kind of weather. Um, and, and, I, and that's the other extreme. Um, I guess it's easier for me to ride in a really hot weather than it is for me to ride in a really cold weather. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't mind the heat as much. Um, but that's taken years of trying to figure out what works well in the heat for me so uh, we don't get those temperatures up here but you know i've gotten them out in the southwest and, and down in south so i've uh you know i've once in a while we'll get a stretch in in this part of the country of 100 degrees for maybe a day or two but it uh it's nothing that really uh you know stops me you know i i don't i don't mind it <laughs> you know i like to say i'm preparing myself for where i'm spending an eternity so we'll see how that all works out all right, we're going to just leave that alone, Denny. Um, great. All right, folks. So um, any more questions? Yep. So SBC Clydesdale says try 95 degrees and 85% humidity in the north Louisiana well, area. I, I, so that's what he's talking about. Yeah, I've seen that in Florida. So <laughs> it, it, it's it's hard. But I, I like I say, I found ways to cope with the heat and the humidity down there. And I think I cope with a lot better than I do with the cold. Although they always say you can dress for the cold, but it's, you can only just take off so many clothes before they, they uh, arrest, arrest you. <laughs> before they arrest you. Yeah. Right. That's, I didn't know if that's where you were going, but I thought we'd go there. So. <laughs> that yeah, you want to make sure you cut me off at times. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, I got to do what I need to do as host, you know. <laughs> All right, folks. So uh, unless anybody else wants to uh, jump on in here this time around, I think uh, I think hey, we got a new subscriber. We got a new subscriber. So good. <laughs> All right. Very, very nice. Yeah. So um, I'll just briefly uh, say uh, thank you very much for uh, tuning in today for the short show. And uh, we'll we'll do this every couple of months and see if we can get this going a little better. It's hard to apparently get a lot of people to jump Especially on here for this, but uh, yeah, maybe it's a time a time of year or whatever. But we appreciate everybody that uh, that's on and 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 joined us. Thank you to Phil Paulson for being with us. Like I said, I'll post his link for his bikes. And um, okay, one more question here. I'm going to go for a tadpole style trike 
uh, SBC Clydesdale says, can you comment on the Trident brand, uh, e quality reader feedback, ex et cetera? So uh, yeah. Tom Floor is the owner of Trident, and he makes a, a very nice uh, trike. They yeah, are uh, they are uh, a little bit less expensive than some of the other trikes that are out there. So um, I think it's a matter of balance. Um, you need to, you know, the answer to your question is you need to try it and yeah. see whether it meets the standard uh, that you're looking for when you're riding. But you can certainly ride a, a Trident trike and uh, enjoy it for many years, as many people have. So um, absolutely, give it a try and see. It's worthwhile checking into. So uh, Trident trikes is, um, is down in, uh, I think, South Carolina. And so, uh, and he's got a shop now he just opened up uh, with his manufacturing uh, or his uh, warehousing facility there. So yeah, you might want to uh, you might want to check them out if you're in your neighborhood, or if not, check a dealer. Yeah, the dealers are, uh, and I'm trying to think who's down, and I'm pretty sure there's a good one down in our Louisiana area, and I can't think who that is right now. But uh, it, you know, most of the dealers uh, that are recumbent shops are handling three or four different uh, brands of trikes. Uh, Trident is relatively new, but uh, it, it's getting out there and. Uh, uh, it's similar to a lot of the other ones. Uh, you know, the platforms are, are a lot the same. I, I would suggest, though, you know, trying a, a, a triple a 20 or, or, and then try a 2620, and that'll get you kind of in the, in the ballpark, which you're, what you're really looking for um, as far as speed and quality and, and price and that sort of thing. All right. All right, then. So I think we will wrap it up. Then uh, take a look at our... Um, Take a look at our uh, oh, lineup Roger. on the web page. What? Uh, what? what, what? Oh, Roger Reddington, I'm picking up my first bent this week is Vision R40. I can't wait. Yeah, good old bike. They, well, that's they a were... fast. That's a fast. Uh, well, R40. No, R40. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good old bike. Yeah. With the uh, Lightning, sorry. Uh, no, yeah. but it's still nice. The Vision has been out of business for quite some time. So uh, 2003, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of people still riding them, though. Oh, and yeah. thank you. Um, thank you for, for that uh, that statement there, Roger Reddington. And SBC Clydesdale, thank you for your comment. And joining us, and Lyle Weddle also, thank you very much for uh, chiming in. We appreciate that. So um, without further ado, then, we're going to end it up here. Please um, please tune in on January 8th for our next uh, regularly scheduled feature show. Um, and uh, we will look forward to seeing you all then. So until then, uh, we will uh, sign off for now. So long, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>